So we'll take our students and we're going to save it as students2 because we're going to use this one for SACS. We're going to change all these public entities to private so that we can only access them through the getters and the setters. There is no direct access allowed. We're going to leave the two string method in place. And you guys already know how to generate getters and setters, right? Without having to code, you simply go to source, organize imports. This time you're going to say select all and then you generate everything. We will take a slightly different approach with SACS. So what we're going to do is, let me cre create a new class. How about that? We're going to create a new class here. And we're going to call this new class Demo SACS Handler with a public static void main. Now, uh, let me teach you something that was introduced recently in Java, it was like a few years back. Instead of I having to write many catches, which can catch, each catch will be able to catch one kind of exception, I can merge all my catches in one catch. How do I do that? I use a special operator, which is an OR, bitwise OR operator, and I can list all my all possibilities. So it pretty much acts like an OR. That means if either of these exceptions are raised, this catch will be called. That's what basically it means. If either of them are raised, this, this will be called. Now, we got to build our try block. So SACS factory equals to SACS, oh, parser factory, sorry, parser factory. dot new instance. Then SACS parser equals to factory dot new SACS parser. And I'm just putting a comment over here. This is where I'm going to write my handler object. Handler object. I will create a, another class to handle XML document. So we still need to create this class. And then we will use the handler object to parse XML documents. So we, we're going to do that step after that. Create a list of students to objects to store data coming from an XML document. So basically what I'm doing here is something very similar to what I did with DOM approach. Do XML to Java mapping. <laughs> so I'll populate this whole thing here. So I'll create a list of students to type as opposed to student type of, that we did before. And of course I'm going to use my handler object to uh, grab everything. So we're going to just leave it like that for now. Then just like in my previous program, I had a for each loop. So I'll have a for each loop that will go through one student at a time 
from student list. And we're going to system.out.println the stud. And for that reason, I left my toString method over there to handle that guy. Okay. I misspelled configuration. That's, that's why the line was airing out. The I.O. exception will be fixed as soon as I upload my students.xml file. So besides this I.O. exception, there shouldn't be any other error. And the student was saying not initialized? What? The student was Yes, yeah, st sorry, st start list and IO exception, right? Though besides those two, uh, there shouldn't be any other error. Okay, next what we will going to do is we will go to create our handler. So we're going to right click on the source and we're going to create a new class. We're going to call this one my sax handler. And it will be a child of a class called default handler. Why do we have to make it a child of default handler? Because if you remember from the previous example that we did with SACS, where did we write our events? In the default handler is where all the events were. So if you want to custom create your own handler, it must be a child of default handler. Okay. Then it can inherit all the methods, start element, and element, and characters, and it can overwrite them. Okay, so we're going to just hit finish here. So here's my default handler, child my sax handler. Okay. Now I need to create a list to hold students, mainly students to class objects. So it'll be a private list of students to that we're going to initialize later on but for now I'm just declaring it the reason I'm declaring it outside because I want to declare them global so that they can be shared between m many methods and private so that nobody from outside can access them and this will be the student object Okay. Oh, so you're right. Students to object. Yep. Now, I need to declare the same Boolean variables that I did before. Now, public void start element. So I'm overriding start element. If Q name dot equals student, that means if element being read is named student, only then you would like to proceed. The read elements ID. So this is the ID number of a student. 
to which for which we're going to use attributes object, which we are passing as a parameter. I'm going to grab its value by referencing the attribute name. I should rather say read elements attribute. Okay. Now we need to initialize student students to object so stud equals to new students to we declared it here on line number 10 now we're initializing it so as soon as we start reading elements is that's when we initialize the students object and then we start populating it with data so next I will going to say stud dot set its ID and that's exactly why I ask you guys to create the setters and the getters because now we can call those setters whenever I need to set any of the property and I can call getters anytime I want to read a property so set ID ID okay now if stud list equals to null that means if stud list this is the first time you are um, storing a value in stud list then you must initialize that as well like as you can see here on line number nine I declared it but I never instantiated it so the first time an element gets read of type student I will going to initialize my array list So this is all part of if I'm reading a student. If I'm not reading a student, else if the Q name dot equals to first name, that means if I'm reading a first name element then I must change the value of boolean first name to true so that I can grab its value and I can do the same for last name and score So anytime I start reading an element, I need to figure out who am I reading. And based on who I'm reading, I'm doing different actions. The reason of reading a student is so that I can grab its attribute and I can initialize a student object and set the ID of that student object to that ID. And if this is the first time I'm reading a student element, then also instantiate my student list. For all other elements, simply set the Boolean variables to true. Now in the end element, in the end element, I do not need to pass attributes because there are no attributes in the end tag. I will simply notify that if the Q name dot equals student. That means only if the student is ending. So that means I have already read all the data items. So what I want to do is I want to add the student to the student list. So if student element is closing then that means that all student attributes and child elements have been read and copied read I should say okay copied and copied to the student object Therefore, 
now it is time to add the student object to the student list now you may be wondering well we never copied first name last name and score we only copied the ID number and the answer to that question is we have not yet written the characters method which we're going to write next which runs before the end element method so start element runs then characters run then end element runs and it is the character that reads the contents so we will now going to create our public void characters And this is where I'm going to make some choices like if the Boolean first name is on, then stut dot set first name to the value that I'm reading from the XML document, and then set the first name Boolean object to false. So I read all the characters from the start all the way through the length of the character. Similarly, I do that for L name and score. I just call respective setters. Okay, now I just want to make sure that I have covered all the aspects of this handler. I do have the Boolean variables. I have a list of students. I have a student that I will go to populate one at a time and add it to the student list. In my start element, I'm basically checking to see if it's a student. If it is, grab its attribute, instantiate it, set its attribute. If the student list has never started, populate it. If student is not the element, check to see if it is first name, last name, score. Set those respective Boolean variables to true so that in the characters I can read their values and set them to the different setters. Towards the end, I got to make sure that if it's end element, I want to make sure that if it is the student element that's ending. If it is the student element that's ending, that means all the data has been read and copied, so I want to add the student element to the stud list. There is one additional method that I must code here, and that is I want to return the whole student list out of this class, which I never had to do in my previous example because everything was done within the same program. So the stud list was accessible. So if I go back to my previous example that I did with you guys, uh, reading XML using the SACS approach, uh, you will notice that the default handler was in the same class. 
So at all times, you guys had access to uh, the stud list. So everything was happening locally, so you never had to worry about it. And then if I look at my solution that I did with the DOM, read XML using DOM store objects, again, since the handling was done within the local class, uh, we never had to return anything back. But now we have to return something back because the reason is everything is done in a different class. So I'm going to write my method here, public list students2. That means I'm going to be returning an object of list type generic students2. Promoted to the students2 type list, which will going to be called get stud list. And all it will going to do is it will going to simply return the stud list. That's all I'm going to do. And this is the method that I must call from demo sax handler so that I can get the entire list. Okay? Now, is this class error free for all of, all of you? Now, let's let's switch back to demo sax, sax handler where we will going to complete the code. So we do have a sax parser factory object created. We do have a sax parser object created. Now it's time to create our handler. So my sax handler equals to new my sax handler. So I've instantiated my handler object. Next, I need to pass this handler object um, to my parse method. So my sax parser object, which I created on line 16, that's the one that I will use to parse my file, which is students.xml. based on this handler object. So basically what I'm doing so far is I am asking my SACS parser object to parse this XML document based on this handler, which has not been locally coded, but rather has been coded outside. In my previous example that I did with you guys with uh, where where was that? Uh, demo sex. Oh, uh, yeah, read XML using sex. That's where I created the default handler handle, and we s created the inner class for it, and towards the end we passed that handler to the parser. Now here we have created an external object because the class is an external class, so we are passing it that way. Okay. Next, I have my student list created, right? But the student list now need to get the data from the get student list method of the handler object. Because handler class, SACS handler class, has a get stud, stud list method which returns the entire list of students. And that's what's being held by stud list on line 26. Then the stud list will traverse through the entire list and will display one student at a time. Okay, now let's run this guy. Score is not coming out. Oh, this has to be a B score. Okay, cool. Thank you.